I'm going to try and survive the next 100 days in Ark's newest modded map, Svaltovheim. The ultimate challenge, try to take down the most toughest and feared boss ever created. Its attacks can shred through the health of even the mightiest of armies. Can I go on to defeat this savage acro? Here is where it all begins. On the beach of an unknown land, lost, naked and afraid, trying to figure out my next best move. I quickly gathered myself and pressed on, collecting the resources needed to craft the basic tools, weapons and armor to try and survive whatever this world could throw at us. I then needed to find a place to camp. So I decided at first to get a few structures of thatch, but then remembered we could do better. And so I spent the rest of the day collecting resources, crafting and then making myself this really odd hubbard structure, which I called home. Day 2 I set out on getting some taming gear and a little more advanced weaponry. I then went out looking for a dino that could help us throughout this journey. And that's when I spotted this parasaur. With my bowler in hand, I was able to trap it. And with some slingshots, well, I started drinking it. It of course needed a bit more of this tactic. And so I repeated this process a few times and got the parasaur down. From there, I just needed to get it some berries. Waited for it to tame up and went on exploring. And that's when I spotted this wee little cave. And guess what? It had crystals. Crystals, baby. That means I could get my freaking spot. Spyglass ASAP! It was day 3 and I thought I'd go ahead and tame one of those highland cows. Of course I had no idea on how to tame these guys, hence why I decided to go after it. I soon realized that the only tameable option for these guys was to tame a baby. And so the search was on to find a baby we could tame. Alas! I had found one! And it was quite easy to tame too because it only needed one of those berries. And presto! We had a baby highland cow but then i spotted this guy a rideable dillo and quite a juicy level too i just had to tame it but whilst doing so well things got a little heated thankfully we came out of this one alive and survived the horde of meganeris and then continued to pursue the dillo we wanted to tame trying to trap and trank it as i was still using my slingshot so of course this took longer than i had anticipated but eventually after some time repeating this strategy we got the dillo down. I then got it some meat and waited for it to tame up. On day 4 I went ahead with raising my highland cow. But of course that was not the only thing on my mind as I wanted to equip my base with a few things. So I went out to get the resources to craft some storage, a bed and a modern pestle. And then crafted a few narcotics. I also needed to secure my base as it was left out in the open. Deciding to go for a few wooden spikes placed perfectly around our base. I then needed to to get some levels in order to get the items to progress through this playthrough and so i went out with my dillo just destroying everything in sight or at least things that we could take out well that's when i spotted this mass chat knowing that it is a good gatherer i wasted no time in taming it oh hi there how you guys doing Great to see you again. Anyways, guess what? I finally got the levels, the levels needed to unlock the refining forge in ground. So you know what I did, right? Yeah, I went out to get the resources needed to craft myself a refining forge and then filled it up with all of the metal that I had. Luckily, we did have some with us. And then I needed to wait for it to smelt. And by doing that, I was able to get myself a smithy. And before you know it, well, I was equipped with a couple of metal tools. And remember that mass shops we tamed the other day? Well, let me tell you something. It was doing quite a great job already because it collected a whole lot of berries that I could use. And so I split all of my meat, waited for that to spoil and got myself the whole lot of freaking narcotics. Later that day, I decided that it would be a good idea for me to go out and get some metal. Back at base, I got really tired of picking up and placing down my wooden spikes and decided that a good solution to this problem was for me to go ahead and craft a dino gate. Ah! There we go. That should do it. Day 6 started with me acquiring a full set of hide gear. I then decided that it was about time that I should go and get a dino to help me traverse this land more efficiently. And well, the Maywing was on top of the list. Luckily, there were a few of them around the area. I just needed to find the perfect candidate and well, drank it. Unfortunately, I didn't really have anything to trap the Maywing with. And so that's where the problems began because as 
soon as you try and drink these things, well, they tend to move around a lot and also travel great distances, making it difficult to keep track of the mirroring I was trying to tame. And yes, eventually it got away from us, going to a place where I couldn't really go, as I had no water tames with me. Although I was not defeated just yet, I had to try and try again and try some more until I finally was able to knock one of those May rings down. It was just freaking glorious. Well, I just had to go and get it the food that it needed and wait for it to tame up. It was day seven. You know, I had a May wing, so I wanted to use this to explore stuff. Also, I wanted to check out this cool little thing of a bobsy. I would say it's called a teleporter that teleports you to a floating platform, which is really cool. So I was really high up in the sky so I could glide and explore as much as I could with my May wing. I then found myself a couple of beaver dams where I went in and hijacked some of their resources. Yeah, was really cool that. Anyways, I went on back to base where I worked on getting myself an upgrade station and then from there I went ahead upgrading the weapons that I had as much as I could. Ah oh, yes, it was day 8 and I started this day by naming some of my dinos and creatures. As for my way wing, I went with one of the suggested names, Orange Juice. Quite a cool fit for this. Anyways, I spotted a tech trike just the previous day and I really wanted to tame this. I thought of a really cool plan. If I could grapple myself onto a tree, it might make things a bit easier for us to try and tame this trike. And yeah, the plan really worked. I was able to trank the trike as much as I could before it started to flee. And well, things could have ended a bit better, I would say, because uh, I sort of pressed the wrong button and landed feet first. Did quite a lot of damage to myself at the same time time but never fear we were still good and eventually got the trike down got it the berries it needed and just when you think things were over i spotted another moss chaps which i proceeded to tame the next two days i focused on building a fence around my base for one i was growing rather rapidly and needed more space two well i needed a more secure defense system and this fitted the description rather well and also i liked this kind of thing anyways and so i began the the awesome work of collecting the resources that was needed in order to craft the structures required for this project. Some fence supports and then these awesome cool looking medieval walls. I also had these uh, medieval doors to fit in with them. Yeah, rather impressive. By the end of it, this is what my base looks like. Pretty cool. Although, just around my base, those bushes, they needed some trimming. Well, just our luck, as I know the people that could take care of this. So, let me introduce you to today sponsor manscaped.com the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products so here's the thing manscaped has hooked me up with their all-in-one performance package 4.0 right out of the box we get this really slick lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer now this is manscaped's fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of the body um uh, did i mention that this is waterproof as well Oops! The lawnmower 4.0 trimmer also has a super smart cordless charging system. And these LED lights on the front shows you how much juice you have left over. Up to 90 minutes of use with a full charge. Not forgetting its neat travel safety mode. Tap the button three times on the front and this enables the travel lock feature. Also included in this performance package 4.0, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. And lastly, Manscaped's Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Completely wide wireless and with the same skin safe technology. For a limited time, you'll get all of this plus two free gifts, the shared travel bag and the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use the promo code at checkout. Manscaped always use the right tools for the job. Day 11, I hooked myself up with some really cool gear. Though I wanted to level it up even further, so I had to get some resources for that. That. And off I went with a couple of my dinos, collecting all of the resources that I needed, some hide and a few other things here and there. I also wanted to tame one of those Meganeras, and for that, I needed a fish basket. Going to try and tame one of them, that was a bit of a challenge. As for one, I couldn't really trap those Meganeras in those fish baskets. It, it just wasn't working out. So I decided to go ahead instead and do a bit of uh, 
metal farming. You see, the previous day while I was out and about, I spotted some die wolves. And not just normal die wolves, they were our die wolves. And I really wanted to tame them. And so I went ahead and prepared a taming pen for that and returned to the area. That's when I needed to find a safe spot to place my taming pen down, which I did. And then I needed to cut those die wolves into my taming pen. That was the tricky part because there were a pack of them and I didn't want anything to go wrong as I was sort of on the edge of a bridge or a pillar or whatever you call it. But anyways, I managed to get those die wolves in and well, took out the lower one and started tranking the high level die wolf and got it knocked out. I then proceeded to give it the food that it needed and waited for it to tame up. Once tamed, I thought it would be a good idea to tame a mate for it. Just that there weren't any females around so I thought I'd go ahead and clear out all of the other die wolves and hoped one might spawn in. Well, things went south really fast and I had to think quickly in order to get myself out of this mess. Luckily, we were able to retreat to a safer location and well, live to see another day. Day 13, I went back to the spot where I placed down my taming pen and well, picked it up because this was the day that I was going to tame a mate for the die wolf I tamed previously. So I went out in search for a die wolf and looked everywhere on the map. I thought I could find some in and around the snow biome. And that's where I went to. And before you know it, I was able to find a pack of die wolves and place down my taming pen. So much for that though, as I wasn't able to kite it in there, I had to actually use my bowlers and try and trank this die wolf down, which I was able to do so. And I got the tank back at base. What I didn't realize is that it wasn't really the type of die wolf I needed. And so I tried to actually start breeding my die wolves. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out. Rep, it was day 14 and I decided to do a few things around base. But first, check the saddle that I got, an Ascended Andrew Sarkis saddle. Really cool stats, that is. Anyways, I got myself a Fabi and then worked on getting a Jenny for the base so that I could hook up some lights because it was quite dark at night. Later on that day, I went out exploring and that's when I spotted this beauty of a find, an S-type Ankylosaurus. And of course, I just had to tame it. So I hooked myself up onto the side of a cliff and started tranking the Yankee until I got it knocked out and then got it some berries. Spent the rest of the time waiting for the Yankee to tame up. Day 15, I spotted this little island on the map and I was quite intrigued so I decided to go and check it out. At first, I found these cool little loot boxes, the same kind of things you'd find on Ragnarok. And these gave us some juicy loot too, everything that you would need from food to cementing paste and even metal polymer too and then i decided to have a closer look luckily i didn't really rush into this place as there were some npcs lurking around the area and they had some crazy hp too so i tried to take them out at first with some bows and arrows and i got a little braver and decided to go in there with my die wolf yeah Another bad move, but luckily we were able to get most of them down and got some pretty interesting loot as well. I also noticed that there were dwarves inside this little fort too. It seemed like we needed to bust in with some explosives or something. Definitely one for another day, or at least when I'm a bit more prepared. Alrighty, so guess what peeps? I found some really cool dinos that I wanted to tame. Yeah, some R-type thalers. Quite the mopey levels too. And yeah, of course, I just had to tame it. So I came and prepared to the redwoods with my taming pen. I just needed to find a spot to place it down. But I couldn't find a place as there were loads of other dangerous dinos that I needed to take out or at least kite away. Terror birds, carnos, and even some other thalas that I didn't want to tame. Eventually, I found a good spot to place down my uh, taming pen. And then I had to kite the thala in. That was also tricky as I uh, wasn't able to kite the thyla into the taming pen. Although it did get stuck in my taming pen somehow, which works as I was able to trank the thyla and knock it out. Yeah, once it was down, I got it the food that it needed and then waited for it to tame up. Yeah, man, well, the thyla did take quite a long time to tame up. Actually, I just finished taming it, so I decided 
to go out and level it up. And also, I had this sort of strong team and a good saddle for it too. I could actually go out and take on some of those alpha dinos or berserker dinos is what it's called here. Man, we got some sweet, sweet levels from them and some juicy loot too. Some of those interesting loot as well. On my way back to base, I spotted a Lystro and decided to tame that too. Well, just in case, you know. Ah, yes. Day 18. Well, this was quite unexpected and quite easy too, as I spotted a high level Spino and I really wanted to tame this thing. And so I grappled onto the edge of a cliff and decided to go ahead and trank the Spino. Like I said, it was quite easy. I was able to trank the Spino until it started fleeing and just chased it down until I uh, got it knocked out. And well, got it some prime meat and waited for it to tame up. Easy peasies. Who would have thought? Now that I had a Spino, I needed to get the resources in order to craft its saddle. That's what I wanted to do. But I spotted this dino, a modded dino which I never tamed before. So I thought I'd go ahead and get in some practice so I'd know what to do. In theory, I know how to tame this guy, but actually doing it? Well, that's a whole other story. At first, I thought it needed a whole bunch of food in order to tame this guy because it had some crazy numbers on my spyglass. The thing is, throughout the tame, I didn't know that it needed one piece of meat in order for me to feed it. Only much later on during the day did I get the hint that that's what I was supposed to do. So yeah, this took a whole lot longer than it needed to. After figuring this out, I managed to tame this dino such as quite easily. Finally, I could focus on getting the resources to craft my Spino saddle. And for that, I needed to check out some of those beaver dams. They would surely have the resources I required in order to craft my Spino saddle. And what do you know? I was right. They had exactly what I needed. Back at base, I went on crafting my Spino saddle, and later on during that day, I decided I'd go out and get some metal. It was day 21, and would you believe it? I found another high level R type, Thyla Kaleo. Even better, a perfect mate for the Thyla I already had. So, of course, I had to go on and tame it. Hooked myself up on the side of a cliff and began taking out the Thylas that were unwanted. Once that was done, I focused on trying the Thala that I wanted to tame, tranking it until I knocked it out. Once that was done, got it the food that it needed, and well, while waiting for it to tame up, I decided to go on and tame an otter. And for that, I needed to take out a fish and then try to feed it. Yeah, much easier said than done. Although, I still got the tank. Now that I had a pair of R-type thylers, I decided to go on and breed them for the next few days in order to get the best stats out of the pair that I already had. And also within that time, I went out loot hunting and got myself a set of black gear and then went ahead upgrading it as much as I could before finally settling on a thaler that I was happy with. These stats look pretty decent. I'll keep this one. Day 25, I decided it was time for me to check out some of the caves. One in particular looked really interesting, it was not far from the Anki I tamed the other day. I just had to go and check it out. Not long after, I came face to face with a Magnusaur. Yeah, I know. Crazy, but also really cool. But anyway, I needed to get rid of this one first before going in further. And so I tried my best to take it out before leading it outside of the cave and then finally giving it its final breath of life. Going back in, well, another Magnusaur spawned in. Just my luck right? I had to take care of that one too. The third time running into the cave, I came across a rock elemental. I knew this one was slow, so I opted to run past it. Rightly so, as I was able to dodge it. Further down the cave is where I spotted a whole group of Magmasaur. And this indeed was a Magmasaur lair. Just that, there were way too many Magmasaurs. There was no way that I was going to go down there and take all of them out in order to steal their eggs. In that moment in time, I decided that I would live. So that was me, out of there, ready to face another day. See ya! Day 26, it was off to yet another cave, and this one more interesting than the previous, as this led us to the aberration part of the map, which was just so freaking beautiful. So huge, so much to see, and so much to do. Just not enough time, really. Anyways, I went in exploring with my Spino, so nothing really could do much damage to us, so I had the freedom to check what was going on in this cave. I did come across one point in the cave where it gave me some type of warning, so 
some boss kind of warning and I wasn't able to use my soul balls in there. So uh, yeah, if I couldn't take my dinos in, probably was going to be a bit dangerous for us. I wasn't willing to try. Although I did want to tame a roll rat. I just didn't have the resources to get that. However, I knew where to get what I needed. So I had to get out of the cave and return another day. Day 27. You bet I was off to that roll rat. But of course I needed some honey. And luckily on this map, you'd find honey almost anywhere on the map. Just like this. And those of it too. Once I grabbed a stack of that, I was back into the aberration cave. Hold up. Just before I go to taming the roll rat, I spotted this. A freaking 145 S-type Maywing. Of course, I couldn't pass this opportunity in taming it. Tranking it with as much trank arrows it needed to be knocked out. And once it was knocked out, I gave it some prime meat. And well, I waited for it to tame up before moving on. Ah, there we go. Back at the roll rat. But before I could tame the roll rat, I needed to clear the area of all the nasties. That wasn't really a problem with my spino, as we just shredded everything in sight. Once that was taken care of, I proceeded to tame the roll rat, giving it the honey it needed, and well, just waited for it to tame up. And peeps, guess what? We just tamed a freaking high-leveled roll rat. Day 28. Well, I went on exploring once again, and whilst out exploring, I stumbled upon something I really needed. In fact, we all would really need if we play on this map. You see, we needed this special kind of forge. It's called a dwarven forge. Now this you would need in order to smelt those special loots that we would get from those dwarven NPCs and also those berserker dinos. And we would need those in fact to take on the world's bosses. So I had to go back to base to collect the items needed for this forge and check it out. Lo and behold, it worked. We're on our way to fighting the boss. Well, Almost. It was day 29 and I was already thinking about building our main base. I did find a really cool spot for it. As you can see, it looks rather beautiful. But I had to tame some helpers to get this build going as fast as possible. Because I didn't want to waste too much time focusing on the build. When I needed the time to actually build the biggest army I've ever built in my life. Nevertheless, we had to get things done and I needed to tame a Dodicarus. My best guess was to go to where I tamed the Yankee. And alas, I was right once again. I had found a Dodicarus good enough for me to tame and began tranking it until I knocked it out. Getting its food, however, well, you see, I spotted this little farm just between my base and the place I was taming the Dodicarus. And that gave us a whole lot of crops. Came in handy when I needed to feed the Dodicarus. It was day 30 and I decided on what base I would really like to build. I was looking into building a small kind of castle for my main base using the castle and keeps mod but of course using that mod i would need a whole lot of resources and one of its main resources that i needed was a whole lot of cementing paste i had to use this time gathering as much cementing paste as possible hitting down as much of the beaver dams as we could gathering all of this cementing paste we could find it wasn't over just yet peeps we needed a whole lot more so after a whole day's worth of collecting cementing paste it was quite clear that I needed a backup plan because we didn't have nearly as much of the cementing base needed to craft an entire base. That's when I had a great idea of going after a chemistry bench. That would definitely help us with what we were looking for. And so I went out collecting the resources needed for that. Electronics and the other bits and bobs. Luckily, I kept the organic polymer I got from the Karkinos the other day. That really came in handy. Back at base, I had all the resources needed to craft my chemistry bench. I also had some chitin and keratin stocked up. I just needed to get some stone. And there you have it. A whole bunch of cementing paste in the works. Almost ready for me to start cracking with the base build. While out the other day searching for cementing paste, I came across this bad girl right here. A 145 Rex. It would be the perfect dino to include in our army for the final boss fight. And so I had to go and tame it. It's the only logical thing to do. But first, I needed to take care of some of 
of the locals. I didn't want any of them to interfere with my Rex tank. Once I got rid of those, I hooked myself on a cliff once again and started tranking the Rex until I knocked it down. It was quite an easy team, actually. Once it was down, I was able to get it some of the prime meat it needed and, well, waited for it to tame up. It was day 33 and before I could get down to the business end of things, I thought I'd decide and have a little bit of fun, you see. I wanted to go ahead and visit that dwarven island once again. And this time I was a bit more prepared. I went in with my spino and took out all of the dwarves that were outside. I then needed to bust into this little castle or fort. I had some C4 on me and well, we broke through those gates. Of course, I didn't know that there were a few dwarves inside. What I didn't know was how many were in there. And in every corner, we faced a dwarven warrior. The thing is, they had huge amounts of HP, so it was quite scary facing one of them. And the other thing to note, we couldn't really bowler them inside this little fort. So I had to be very careful. And well, I got really scared. So I grabbed whatever loot I could take and made a break for it. Yeah, I'd say that was a victory. At least we didn't die. It was day 34. And as you can see, I wasn't in the mood to build. I was trying everything to try and take my mind off of building. This was one of them. Because at the place I tamed the Rex, I noticed that there was a pack of aloes nearby. So I went back to that spot where I placed down my taming pen and tried to kite one of the highest level aloes into it. And that was successful. We got the aloe in and I proceeded to trank the aloe and knock it down. And whilst it was knocked out, I went out to get some prime meat. Yeah, just waited for the aloe to tame up, man. You know what? I think it's time for us to start with that build. There we go. Finally, we got down to working on our main base. So, for the next few days, days 35 to 40, I focused solely on building my main base. Now, of course, this was an inspiration of a video I saw on YouTube. Cypher Sam, the name, it wasn't exactly what the build had shown, but a scaled down version of it. As I said before, I didn't want to waste too much time on this build, as I needed most of the time to work on the army for the final boss fight. But anyways, this did turn out to be a crazy build. Not for the structure itself but the resources that it needed. Although at this point in time, I was better equipped to handle this situation. So I got through it. By the end of it, this is what I had to show for all the work that I did for the past few days. It turned out really cool. We had two levels, some stairs, and at the top of the base, we had some really fantastic views. And to top it all off, we had a really cool greenhouse. Yeah, I really liked this build. Just the flooring. I know, grass growing through it. Nothing I can do at this point in time. Sorry! Okie dokes! As you may know, I just finished my main base build. So, today, it's moving day. Time to gather up all of my dinos and all of the items I could carry and ship them on over to my new and permanent base. And well, at the end of it, it was time to say goodbye to my little hobbit home. See ya in another lifetime my old friend. Day 42. Close to my newly built base, I spotted this. Another high-leveled Rex. And you know what? I had an army to build. So of course, I had to tame this. Luckily, this was perfectly positioned. Made for an easy tame, because all I had to do was trank it. Trank it until it got knocked out. And then, of course, we needed to get it its prime meat. And well, waited for it to tame up. As for his HP though, it looks rather juicy. Might be a good one, this. Day 43, I was back on the army grind. I needed to get that going ASAP because we didn't really have much time left over and, well, I had nothing to show for it. So, my plan was to get half of my army as aloes and the other half as rexes. Fortunately, I was able to find a few aloes that I wanted to tame. The first allosaurus was kind of strange. It was actually stuck into the other aloe which made for an easy tame. So all I had to do there was trank it until I knocked it out and while well, got the tame. While on my way back to base, that's when I spotted the second Dallo. Now this one had the freedom to run. So of course trying to trank it was a bit difficult. Not forgetting that it had company. So I had to try and get them out too. And eventually I just let loose and had to go for it. It was all in or nothing. And finally, finally, we knocked the yellow down. From there, I just had to get it 
with some prime meat and wait for it to tame up. It was day 44, the puzzle pieces were finally coming together, though I had forgotten one thing. Now that I had all these dinos to breed, yeah, I forgot to build a breeding area for my dinos that needed taking care of, and so I went out collecting all of the resources needed to craft a couple of things for my breeding area. We needed some structures and also some ACs, but whilst in this grindy mood of things, I decided to go and grab a few more things for base. I needed some forges, I got some resources and craft a few of those, but then I noticed my forges were looking a bit dry. What do you think I did? Oh yeah, I had to go out and do a little metal run, baby. Let's go! The next few days, I focused on breeding my dinos. We had some rexes to do and some aloes, obviously trying to get the best stats out of the dinos I had. Although, for the aloes, it was a bit different, because you see, I had these really cool mutations from them, and I wanted to pass them through the breeding lines. It was a bit difficult, and wasn't the right time for this, as I had so much to do with so little time, but hey! It won't hurt to try, right? It was time to tackle some of the artifact caves. I at least wanted to do one of the bosses to show you the progression of this map. Of course, they just had the normal world bosses we are all used to in placement of the bosses to come. Anyways, thanks to Bimo Guinness, I believe, for the artifact locations. In this cave, they had two of the artifacts. We were able to get the artifact of the clever quite easily. The second artifact, however, but that was a bit of a mission. And for that, well... I needed to tame a Ravager. Day 49, it was back into the Aberration Cave, or at least the tunnel that leads to the Aberration part of this map. I needed to tame some Ravagers, of course, and well, luckily, I didn't have to go far into this tunnel. Somewhere around the middle of it, I spotted a pack of Ravagers, and one of them was quite a sweet level, max level, that is. Of course, I wanted to tame it, and so I had to take care of all the other ravages that I didn't want. Luckily, all went well and I was able to take him out and bag myself the ravager. But whilst I was there, I wanted to tame one of those light dinos. So I went into the aberration cave, got a couple of things that I needed for this tame. And when I arrived back at the spot, there was another pack of ravagers there and a mate for my ravager. So of course, I had to go and tame it. And after clearing out the area and making sure that the ravager I wanted to tame was in perfect condition, I began tranking it and knocked it out. Oh yeah, I also didn't have soul balls, so I had to go back into the aberration cave to get some crystal. It was day 50 peeps, we made it halfway, and guess what, I had a pair of ravagers. Well then, I guess it's time to start breeding them. Don't you think? Day 51, my Ravager was ready. Yeah, Bloodlust is what I named it. Seemed like the perfect fit. And also, I had a really cool Ascended saddle for it. A Berserker saddle. I was expecting it to have some sort of cosmetic effect on the Ravager, but it was nothing. And I didn't really mind, because it had some really cool stats. And so, I continued with leveling up my Ravager. I took on some of the trees, some of the dinos that were close by, and also, we took on a Berserker. Raptor. Now that gave us a whole bunch of juicy levels. Ha! It was back to the cave once again. Now that I had my Ravager, I could get to the second part of this cave. It was a bit nerve-wracking at the beginning because there was a survivor bag just before we could take out the wall that was blocking. And it had a whole lot of things in there. And it got me wondering what we could expect in this part. But anyways, I pressed on. And judging from the video that I watched, it seems like the middle path was the correct way towards the artifact. Lo and behold, it did seem quite familiar. So, I had to take care of all these nasties and got to a stage where we had to do some parkour. Fortunately, I had some zip lines, so jumping over all of these platforms wasn't necessary. We could do things much easier. Before you know it, I had reached the artifact room, bagging the artifact of the hunter. It was day 53. I believe this was the last cave I needed to do to 
to be honest, this was probably the most easiest cave I've ever done. And it's a good thing, because we don't really get this too often. Apart from the little platform jump that we had to do. Oh, and be careful, in the middle there is a trap, so don't step on that trap. And from those axe swinging traps, nothing that you really need to be worried about. And once I got past all of those traps, I was in the artifact room. Artifact of the massive, baby. Day 54, I thought of ways of how to speed up the breeding and hatching process for my army. And one thing that came to mind was trying to get an egg incubator. So out I went, gathering resources needed by taking out some of the tech dinos that gave me some electronics and grabbed the other bits and bobs that I needed to craft myself an egg incubator. And then got down to some business, hatching some Rex eggs. Ah. What a marvelous sight. The butts of the first batch of the army I'm about to create. Let's go. You know what? I didn't really think Acro spawned on this map. I was thinking that I needed to spawn in the Savage Acro boss. But on day 56, I witnessed my first Acro. Don't know how this happened, but um, yeah, it was uh, really great to see this on the map. Anyways, I really wanted to try and tame it because I had no experience of doing so. So I went ahead with my ordinary taming pen and decided to try and trap it in there. The thing is, it did work although it looked a bit dodgy. But that didn't deter me from trying to tame this thing. I didn't know how to tame it, it just needed to do some damage and feed it some narcotics. Unfortunately, this was a really low level and the kind of damage we were doing was way too much. So I had to put that on hold for a little bit. Whilst doing so, I decided I'd go ahead and make the trap a little bit bigger. Give the acro a bit of room and then try again. It still didn't work out. Maybe I need to sleep on it. Day 57, I was back at the acro site and with a new strategy. This time around, I came in prepared with a normal pump action shotgun. This is what the pros recommend. And so I began shooting it and within a couple of seconds, something surprising happened. It freaking roared, giving us the opportunity of feeding it the narcotics. In doing this a few times, I was able to put the acro into the deepest sleep it had ever had, although it needed mutton to tame up. But luckily, I kept the mutton I got from early days and went back to base to grab it and then feed it to the acro. Good job. Alrighty, now that I had experienced taming an acro, I needed to take them out in order to collect the glands to summon the savage acro, which was going to be my final boss fight. Anyways, we had 50 to collect, so I guess it's best to start somewhere, right? And also, I wanted to tame an Andrew Sarkis. I had a really special plan for this boy. Thing is, I didn't really know how to tame it properly. Just know the basics. But that will do, because an Andrew Sarkis is all I need. For the next few days, I focused more on breeding, hatching and raising my Rexes. I also was thinking about getting the SS Nanny, but that still needed some work to do. So I had to put that on hold for a little while. My aloes still needed a lot of attention too. I had to work on getting their stats to what I wanted, not forgetting to pass their mutations down the line. At the same time, I had to keep my forges full, so a metal run had to be done. I also added in an extra mod, Creature Finder Deluxe, to help me track down those acros for their glands. Finally, I went on taming a female Andrew Sarkis as a mate for the one I had back at base. Yippee, I'm so excited. More breeding to do. Let's go. Day 62 to 64, I worked on building an XP farm for my Rexes. I sort of had an idea of what I was looking for, I just needed to make it. I played with a few ideas to see which works the best. I still had to refine the build to get things working properly. But once I got it to work, boy, did it work wonders. So much so that I had to build another XP farm to try and speed things up. Day 65 started out amazing as I was able to see the fruits of my XP farm. The most satisfying feeling ever. Although I still had loads to do, the Indie Forge was next on the list. I went out gathering resources for it and back at base I realized I needed more polymer, opting to craft some hard poly as I had resources to spare. Later on I checked up on my dinos and went out hunting some macros. Day 66 I worked on getting some saddles for my Rexes. I thought it would be better in doing so a little by little rather than crafting a whole lot at once. Then I focused on 
on getting resources to craft some ammo for my Andrew Sarkis minigun. And later on that day, I hunted down more acros for their glands. Day 67 started the same as recent days, checking up on my rexes and doing bits and bobs around base. But I spotted a UT near base and I wanted to tame it to include in my boss army. Using my newfound strategy of hanging from the side of a cliff, I began tranking the UT and chased it down until I knocked it out. There were a few nasties in the area which I needed to take care of, but in doing so, I was able to get some prime meat, perfect for what was needed to tame the UT. Day 68 and 69, I focused on breeding and hatching more of my aloes as their stats were finally what I wanted it to be and hatched more rexes too. Rotating the rexes that were in my XP farm and added a spot for the aloes as well, not forgetting to craft those saddles that I needed and spending more time gathering those acro glands. Day 70, I just chilled back at base working on my greenhouse, equipping it with some piping, reservoirs and crop lots. I did forget to mention that I was also breeding some androsarcuses. Yeah, at this point in time, I would say my head was spinning. I had so many things to do. I did go and try taming some dung beetles, but for some reason it wasn't working out, so I had to ditch that idea. So before I went into full boss grind mode, I wanted to get a bit more ammo going. I had to spend some time collecting resources to craft some ammo, well, decided to have a bit of fun. Oh uh, yeah, turned out to be really cool stuff, man. My idea for this would be me chilling with my Androsarcus sniping the Savage Acro. Now that's a plan. Alrighty, alrighty. So the next several days were basically a hard grind towards getting ready for the ultimate boss fight. From leveling my Rexes and Aloes to breeding and hatching more of them, I eventually was able to get the SS Nanny. And that helped me a whole lot. You know what? I should have gotten that way sooner. I also had to to hunt down loads of acros as I needed 50 of their glands to summon the savage acro boss. I needed to get that done as soon as I could man. Adding to all of this, I had to craft a whole bunch of saddles, ammo and I needed to get those resources too. It was just madness for these couple of days, but I was determined to get it done. Ah yes. At last, I was ready. I just needed a few of my Rexes to heal up. While waiting for that, I thought I'd get ready for a world boss fight, taking those special resources to refine them in the Dwarven Forge. In return, I got these really cool items. And these items are what's needed to summon a world boss. Ooh. Let's go. Day 98, it was off to the brood mother's lair and I opted to take an army of aloes with me. Just something different for a change. Although my aloes did not disappoint. They simply just charged and shredded the brood mother. To be honest, it was a bit of a longer fight than a wreck squad, but them aloes got the job done and with ease too. I didn't really have to stress about it. Righto, time to prep up for the final fight. I decided to summon the boss near my base. It seems like it was a good idea. I just needed to put away all of my dinos that were outside just in case things go south. And grab the dinos I needed and got ready for the fight. This is going to be glorious. And there I was, face to face with the savage acro. One thing I knew is that the acro could destroy huge armies with a single attack. So to counter that, I decided to send in smaller groups, wave after wave, while I sniped the savage acro with my Andrew Sarkis. My first group of aloes were doing great, but was no match for the savage acro. I sent in my second as soon as I could. They fought valiantly until the savage acro whipped out its special attack and wiped them out too. So I sent in another group to attack, and another, watching them meet the same fate as their predecessor. Death. Death was written all over the screen. I had lost it. I had lost all focus, losing my Andrew Sarkis in the process. I was panicking, freaking out in fact. I really didn't know what to do. Nah, what are you talking about? I'm just messing around. I got this. I just had to regroup and reposition myself to get front row a seat as I watched my team totally annihilate the savage acro. I almost felt pity for it. Almost.